Well, hello everyone. Thank you for Joey for that lovely piece of music to start us off. It's really relaxed me, how about you? Listen, welcome if you've just joined us. It's Tuesday Tips Live, which means it must be your weekly dose of something new from the DJ industry from us here at Digital DJ Tips. And it's quite a good thing we've got for you today because of course we're looking at this, the new controller from Numark. Uh, in fact, they've got two new controllers, but we're going to be concentrating on this one uh, because this has got pretty much everything that the other one's got with a few extra bits and pieces as well. It is the Newmark Platinum FX. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. So if you have any questions about this, I will talk you through some of the features. If you have any questions about this, ask them and I will help you with them. I've spent the last couple of days with this and the other controller, the other controller being this one here which is the, the new Newmark mix track. It's called the Mix Track Pro FX. And as I say, it's very, very similar to the Platinum, the one that we've got in the center of our screen here today. So anything you, you wanna know about this, you just ask away, I'm here to help you with it. So if you are new to the channel, this is Digital DJ Tips. We are the global DJ school, and we're here to help you get better as DJs and DJ producers. We do it through our website, we do it through our books, we do it through our courses, but also we do these free live shows on, we're currently live on YouTube, Twitch, Mixcloud Live, hello Mixcloud people, uh, and on Facebook on our Global DJ Network public group and also on our Facebook page. I think I've got everything there. So wherever you're watching this, hello, and please do comment. Please also share if you find this interesting because it helps us to do this stuff. All right then. Um, I guess the only other thing I want to say before I start is if you're not watching this live, it's because you weren't subscribed and you didn't get the notifications. It's a lot more fun doing it live. Anything can happen live. It's just a recording afterwards. But that said, please do ask questions even if you're watching the recording and we will get back to you and help you with them. All right then. So shall we get started? Before we get stuck into talking about this new device from Newmark, the Newmark Mixtrack Platinum FX and... The mix track, mix track platinum, uh, the mix track pro FX. Before we get talking about these two controllers, I want to know what you want to know. So we'll start off with a few of your early comments over here on the comment cam. So welcome, people. I can see we're very busy already, but that's uh, only to be expected when a new controller is in the house. Hello to all our regulars, to Mark, and uh, hello to Sky. Hi to Joey on YouTube. Uh, and Andre, Monte, Andre's in Trinidad, that's awesome. Hi to Del Sang, always good to have you here, my friend. Uh, hello to uh, Justin, who says, does it work with iPad Pro and DJ? It's a great question. It will do, because you can map DJ to pretty much anything. So, so yes, it will, just get it open and get mapping. I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. How much are both? Uh, this person is on our Global DJ Network, and you haven't clicked the link in the description for today's webinar and why would you because you know you need to be told this stuff in the description uh, there should be a link uh, Mr. Unknown or Mrs. Unknown or Miss Unknown that says um, Ecamm Live and if you click on there we can show your face on the screen our global DJ network is a private well it's, it's a public group but we have to let you in by DJs for DJs uh, and it's a great place to be by the way if you're not in it get in it it's on Facebook just go to Facebook and search global DJ network and click join and we'll let you in uh, all right then so uh, how much are both 199 for the mix track pro FX and 249 for the platinum FX that's dollars all right then, are the jog wheels bigger than the Roland 202 or the same? They're six inch jog wheels uh, and they're big. I haven't seen jog wheels that big on pretty much any DJ um, controller of this kind of, this kind of price. Uh, so for instance, if we look at the, I'm just trying to find another controller to show you. This is the Roland 707 and the jog wheels on that are considerably smaller than the jog wheels on the Newmark. They're just a, an example. I haven't got the 202 in front of me to check that, but they will almost certainly be bigger than the jog wheels on the 202, is the answer to that question. All right then, more questions. Thank you for that, Kite Monkey. Uh, the next question is, does it have dual USB? No, there's no dual USBs going on here, Dale Sang. This is a, it's an entry-level controller. It's a replacement for the other mix tracks. Uh, the only problem I can see with them is the size. I have some big hands, says Danny. Well, they are quite big. Uh, you know, the buttons are a little bit small on the performance pads. You know, these are not the biggest performance pad buttons in the world. But I don't think you'd have a problem with it. But you should give it a go, of course. 
Uh, so do they work with Virtual DJ 2020? Says Mark, almost definitely they will very, very soon, Mark. Uh, which one looks and feels more pro to you? They're both exactly the same. I mean, they really are, they're almost identical. Let's talk about a couple of the differences uh, on these controllers. So the differences really are down to what's, in, what's on the jog wheels. So on the jog wheels, we've got these displays here. Yep, which are showing you BPM, time through the track and so on in the middle of the jog wheels. On this one, they don't have them. These are just capacitive jog wheels. But guys and girls, that's about it to look at. They really are very, very similar. The other difference is that the Mixed Track Platinum has got Platinum FX, has got four channels. So you can change, even in Serato DJ Lite, which is the software it comes with, you can switch between four decks. Uh, and you can't do that on the DJ, um, on the Mixed Track Pro FX, the other one. So there's another difference there. If you're gonna wanna use four channels, it's all wired in and working, to, ready to go on the Platinum. Uh, all right then, so thank you for that question, Angelo. Uh, hi to Sideshow Mall, always good to have you here, my friend. Rise Beyond Ministry just says, great tutorials. Uh, by the way, you're welcome. By the way, we've got videos, we've done full video reviews of both of those, uh, and you can see them, you can see the Platinum review by heading over to this uh, URL, djtips.co slash newmarkfx. Uh, that'll take you to the review of the Platinum, and then from there, there's a link to the other review and a link to the, to the um, to the written reviews as well. So there's a, there's a lot more information about these. I'm not gonna be able to cover everything in this Q&A. The Q&A is good because you can ask stuff that maybe I haven't thought about in the review. That's why I love these. Uh, all right, George says, I have a Mixtrack Pro 3 and it only has one output. How many outputs do these have? These only have one output as well. So they have a RCA output, that's it. And then apart from that, they've got the input for the microphone and they've got the computer link. So that's very normal for controllers at this kind of price range to only have that single output on them. So that's the answer to that one, George. Uh, it's always nice to see a, good, a new controller appear, especially under quarantine, right? Um, so hello to Newmark. Always good to have the manufacturers with us on these things. Uh, if you've got any questions about your controller, Newmark, you just ask away. I've, I've had it for a couple of days. I, I'll do the best that I can to help you. Uh, is it available to purchase at the moment? It's a very good question and I did notice when we went live, I suddenly realised that it's the one thing I didn't put in the, in the news piece. So I will double check that. We've got Newmark here. Maybe you can tell us, uh, Newmark people. Uh, all right then, uh, is it just like the SX2? Uh, no, it's not as a pro a controller as the SX2. It doesn't cost anywhere near as much money. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's comparable at all with the SX2. Uh, when will they be releasing in the UK? Yeah, we will get you release info and we'll add it to the news piece uh, as well when we've got that information. Um, uh, I want to buy, I have to buy it, says Santiago. So hopefully you can, uh, you can find that wherever you are in the Hispanic world. Um, what would be the Pioneer or Newmark equivalent? Well, this is a Newmark controller, of course. The Pioneer equivalent would be the DDJ400, which is only a two channel controller. So it's more equivalent to the Pro rather than the Platinum. Um, but that's, that's the kind, kind of closest Pioneer. If you want a Serato equivalent, it would be the Pioneer SB3 for sure. Uh, all right then, what can I get for 250, says Rise Beyond Ministry. Yeah, all those controllers I just mentioned. Um, they look the same size as the DDJ-1000, says Jordan. No, they're not, trust me, they're not the same size as the DDJ-1000. They're, they're quite big, they're a little bit deeper than the previous model. I've got the previous model here, actually. Shall we have a look at it? This is the previous one. And they're about the same width as this. However, uh, Look how big those jog wheels are. Let's just compare those jog wheels to the ones on the new model. Look at that. So it's about a little bit deeper, as you can see, but it's about the same width. One other interesting thing, look at where the pitch sliders are, here and here. And notice on the new one, they've made the decks identical. So it's like separates pushed together rather than this kind of mirror image look. But as I was saying, look at the size of the jog wheels. I mean, the difference there is chalk and cheese. They really are uh, very different in size. So there's a big improvement there on the jogs for sure. All right then, let's get some more questions for you. Uh, hi, says uh, someone else over on Global DJ Network. First time listener, I'm really interested in hearing about the new products. Well, we're glad to be able to help you. Uh, all right then, uh, Danny's already ordered it, so it's obviously available to order. Uh, so Danny's sold already. Uh, that's cool. Does it have more than two channels, says Colin? The, this one does, but the 
Pro doesn't. So the Platinum does, the Pro doesn't. Uh, and the channels are controlled via the same mixer uh, controls and decks. You just press a button to decide whether you want to control uh, one and three or two and four. Um, does it work with Serato Scratch Live or Serato DJ Pro? It works with Serato DJ Pro. Scratch Live is a legacy product now. I've no idea if it would work with that, but it does work with DJ Pro. Although it comes with Serato DJ Lite and you would need to pay to upgrade it if you want the Pro features. Uh, are they expensive? Uh, 200 and $250 is the answer to that. Uh, how does a two channel mixer work with four decks? Okay, so let me explain that for you. So over here, here is uh, some music playing. Let's get that back to the beginning. Some music playing on deck number one, right here. And over on the software, you can see deck number one playing away. So if I want to load something onto deck number two, let's just pause that for a second and go back to the controller, go back to me here. If I want to load something on deck number two, I press the deck select button here and that will bring up deck number two. And in the, well, actually it's deck number three because you get deck one and three on this side and two and four on this side. So now over in the software, if you look in the uh, top left-hand corner of the software, you see there's a number three and there's no waveform. If I press that button again, I'm pressing the deck button again now, you'll see that I go back to one. So that's switching between decks one and three up there. So now on deck three, I can load something else by just loading it normally by using the controller. So select something and that's selecting over on the software. So let's just load that track there uh, for argument's sake. So I press the load button here. So now over on the software, you'll see that I have a track loaded on here. That's on deck three. And if I press the button here again, which is the deck button, then over on the software, I'm actually back to deck one. It's deck one, deck three. And all I'm doing to switch between those is pressing this deck button here. You can see that display is changing as well at the top here. So, that's how it works uh, and it can get very confusing with two mixer channels and two decks and four sources playing away. You know, it's why Carl Cox uses four real decks, <laughs> four faders, right? Uh, so, uh, but that's how it works anyway. So I hope that was useful, Mark. Uh, New Mark are confirming that the yes, there are four decks on the Platinum uh, and they're also confirming the price. Confirm, avail confirm availability for us, please. Uh, New Mark, that'd be great. Uh, so Tim says, woohoo, New Mark Platinum represents. So we've got some people pleased here about that. Is it class compliant for, compliant for iOS? I don't know that. I would guess, I would guess it is, but I don't know the answer to that. Um, it would be much better if I had a separate power source and even an XLR or output jack, yeah, but it would cost more as well, Jordan. It's not the market it's going for, but thank you for that comment. Uh, are the knobs touch sensitive like uh, other new mark controllers in the past? No, they're not. Uh, they are just, uh, you know, they're just some, some knobs that you touch them and you can do clever things with them, but they haven't got that, uh, that function on them. Uh, do you feel they're durable? They seem to be very light. Yes, they are. It's one good thing about them. They feel really durable. And I have to say this one here, we've had it for four or five years and we've been teaching with it uh, and it's it's lasted fine, but it feels a lot better built than this one, which is the previous one. I think the build quality is one of the things that's really impressed me on them. Uh, so yes, very much so. How is the scratch latency? All depends on your computer. You can put it down to negligible. Uh, we have it quite high because when we're live broadcasting, all our poor computers are pushed hard. Uh, but no, the scratch latency will go as low as your computer will let you take it. Uh, I would say it would be not noticeable if you get it down to two milliseconds or something like that. Uh, all right then, thank you to Geo Bro for your support. Uh, DJ Richard K says, uh, DJ 400 is still way better. Well, it'd be nice if you could explain your thinking there to help people out a bit more than just giving an opinion. DJ Richard K, maybe you can. You certainly get better software with the DDJ 400 from Pioneer. It comes with the full record box program. This comes with Serato DJ Lite, which is a good program, but it doesn't contain everything you need to, uh, you know, to really push things. So uh, yeah, there's the, the advantage there. Is, uh, is in the favor of the 400 for certain. Uh, all right then, um, how well do they work with live streaming, broadcasting and sound? They would work absolutely fine, like, like all controllers will, so they'll be, they'll be fine for that. Newmark <coughs> are confirming that they're now shipping in most regions. So thank you very much, Newmark, for that. Uh, how do you do effects on the new Newmark controller since there are no touch strips, says Tim. Glad you asked. Shall we go and have a look at the effects? Because these are the thing that's gonna divide people the most, I'm sure. I love them. Uh, but not everyone will. So let's go and look at the effects. All right then, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm just gonna get a, a 
loop playing on this uh, here. Actually, that's going to get very annoying, looping like that. So let's just keep putting it back to the beginning when we want to start again. Right, so the effects. So the effects are on these paddles here. And this is unusual. There's no effects above here. There's no effect strips. Uh, you get filters. Of course, filter is an effect. It's the most common effect, right? You also get an effect on here, on the pads called fader cut. So let me just quickly show you that. This is like doing this, which is why it's called fader cut. It's a scratch effect, also known as transform or gate, but you get that one there. So that's quite often an effect that is given to you as one of the effects. But uh, apart from that and the filter though, the effects are on these paddles and this is good and bad. It's really good because they're immediate. So if I want to put a high pass filter over this, It's just on and it's off when I take my hand away, which is really nice. Same with Echo. Really fast and easy to use, and I really like that. You can lock it on by pushing it up. It's now locked on until I turn it off again. These are very much the same as the effects, whoops, uh, very much the same as the effects you get in DJ MS9, the Pioneer Mixer, Newmark's own Scratch Mixer. There are a scratch battle DJ's effect uh, and they're different to using the old way where you used to have well I've got the old controller here which had effects buttons and pads up here these are not as easy to use but they give you more control we'll talk about that again in a second but let's go back here and I'll just talk you through the rest of what we've got here we've got reverb for phaser Got to turn it on actually. There you go. A flanger. A low pass filter. Now the difference between this one and this one is that this one we can momentarily put on and off. Whereas this one would be hard to do that because it's a knob. So that's one thing I liked about the filters uh, and the high pass filter. Now you saw me turn this knob here. This is the wet dry knob. That's how, uh, how much of the effect is mixed in. And the beats knob here is how quickly the effect cycles. So you can see that on the software. If you look in the middle of the software, I'll put the effects panel on so you can see it. Uh, down in the middle of the software, there are, there's a number eight, it says beats and eight, just kind of middle left a bit. Uh, and if I turn the beats button here, that number will change on the software from eight to four, two to one. And this is the number of beats that the effect cycles across. So those two controls there in the middle uh, are pretty standard on effects. Uh, and there's a tap control as well for tapping the BPM. Right, let's talk about what's not good about those. I've got to get the right camera. What's not good about those? There's only one effect that you can dial in there, not only for each deck, but for the whole controller. Even if you've got the four decks running at once, there's only one effect, because whatever effect you choose there is gonna be used for everything. So there is a limit there uh, that a lot of people will just not like. For me, I, I don't ever do clever stuff with effects. I never daisy chain effects together. I never have different effects going on different decks at once and stuff. I just want a bit of echo, a bit of reverb, a bit of filter, maybe a phaser every now and then. And those give it to me and they're right there, right in the center of the mixer. Uh, and I love it, I think it's great. It's a gamble, but it's great. But it will divide people the way they've implemented the effects there for sure. All right then, uh, let's go carry on with what you have to say, people. Uh, what features did you like? Well, you've kind of guessed that one, Luis. I did like those effects, I thought they were very good. Um, uh, what's the price difference between the new models and the old? I think they're probably priced about the same, to be honest, but I haven't checked. 
Um, wow, says games. I want to write the mapping for Tractor 3 for this controller. So someone's obviously liking the paddles there. Uh, what would the Denon equivalent be to the Platinum? Uh, can you hook a turntable up? No Denon equivalent, because Denon makes basically pro gear and this is beginner gear. But um, you can't hook turntables up because they uh, don't have any external inputs. It's all software. Um, can you control the Serato effects on Platinum or does it have to be... Uh, does it have built-in effects like the DDJ-1000? They're all Serato effects and you can actually control the Serato effects that you can't control directly on the unit uh, with your mouse on the screen. They're still there, there's just no controls for them on the unit. Um, I think it's nice that, that Newmark included four channels on this, says Mike. That's a huge feature on a budget controller. Um, I wish the DDJ-400 had that. Looking at you, Pioneer. I've not seen any comments from Twitch today. I'm not even sure if we're live on Twitch. It looks like we are. Just haven't got many viewers going on there today. Anyway, if you're on Twitch, hello. I want to get a few chair comments from Mixcloud uh, because we have got our Mixcloud crew with us today. So if you're on Mixcloud, here comes your shout out. Uh, hello to DJ G who says, finally, Newmark is doing non-mirror layout. I can't wait to see the other controllers going that route like the NS62. Hi to DJ Nick who is waiting patiently there. Uh, for that. Uh, DJ Nick says, my first controller was a Mix Track 3. No onboard sound card and I loved it. I'll remember the days when controllers didn't have sound cards. Uh, so uh, more comments if you're over on Mixcloud, just feel free to comment. I will come back to you at some point. Right, when are they going to be available? In Italy, apparently they're available pretty much everywhere right now. So get on Amazon, get ordering. Uh, so uh, how would you compare these to the DDJ SB3? I have it and I want you to compare it. The DDJ SB3 is only two channel. It's got smaller jog wheels and it's got more conventional effects control that lets you do more. Uh, so there's the biggest differences there. Oh, look, someone on Twitch. You guys rock. Hi, DJ Nika. Um, hello to Chen in Vegas uh, and Shell Rock uh, as well. Good to have you guys here. All right then, um, uh, more questions about this controller. There's lots and lots of questions coming in, but I want to have the questions about the controller. Uh, what mic inputs does it have? It has a single quarter inch jack input for the mic. Um, uh, that looks quite jittery, probably looking at the software screen, right? It's just a broadcaster. The software screen's really very smooth in real life. Uh, all right then. Uh, I like the temporary toggle switch for the FX, says Del Sang. Um, VJ Mr. Richard just says, hi, I'm here. Howdy. Uh, I don't like Serato. Can I use Virtual DJ with it? I'm using a Mixtrack 3 Pro 3 and I'm happy with that. You will be able to. They'll map it for that for sure. Uh, DJ Cryonic says, damn, Newmark is doing work here. I bought an NS62. Uh, I was really happy with using the Newmark N4 before, and this is a huge upgrade. Indeed, it is. Uh, by the way, if you're enjoying this, please do hit that share button. If you're watching this on the replay, uh, please do subscribe uh, and do click notify so you can watch them live next time. Uh, and if you've just joined us live, again, subscribe and click notify so that you find out when these are going. But you can watch from the beginning on the replay, and we will answer your questions underneath uh, everywhere that they occur. And if you want to watch a full half hour video of this controller where I've taken it apart, well not literally, uh, exhaustively gone through every single feature. You can see that on this URL here, djtips.co slash newmark fx, djtips.co slash newmark fx if you want to watch a full review. We also have a full review of the smaller one, the Pro, which I've got over there as well, and the Pro FX. Uh, and we've got them written up on the website. So there's lots of places where you can find out more about these when this broadcast is finished. But I'm here to answer your questions right now. Um, Rodjik says, any videos on live streaming? Your videos are so professional. We are uh, using OBS with Facebook Live. Yeah, we've got loads. If you go to digitaldjtips.com and in the top corner in the search box type live streaming, you'll see dozens of articles, videos, guides uh, about live streaming that we've made recently. Or just go to our YouTube channel uh, and you'll see them in there as well. But the best place to search for those is definitely digitaldjtips.com. Um, the stream on Twitch is buffering, says Darnell. Oh, well, that's why, uh, that's why there's a struggle going on over there on Twitch. Hi to DJ uh, Cy Martinez over on Mixcloud. Good to have you here, uh, my friend. Um, all right then. Uh, so uh, do you know anything about a new NS74 or an NS8? says uh, uh, Andres. Well, I don't uh, have, any, have any clues about that uh, at all, so no. Uh, Big Dog Girth says, more toys. I've got no room for them now, though. Uh, yeah, uh, I agree with you. I know you've got no room because you've bought pretty much everything we've reviewed over the last uh, few months, haven't you, Michael? 
Um, how much does it weigh? Two point something kilos, about 2.2 kilos for this one here, and a little bit less, I would guess, but not much less for the other one, uh, is your answer, the upbeat guide. Someone else asking about turntables? No, you can't hook it up to turntables, unfortunately, uh, because it doesn't have any inputs other than software inputs. Uh, Daryl says, how do you feel about this unit versus the Newmark NV2? Uh, I think it's, it's, it's great. Um, the NV2 is also great. So this is probably slightly better value, but the NV2 is older, of course. But no, I think they're both great units. So uh, yeah, Twitch stream is fine here in Atlanta, says VJ Mr. Richard. So there we go. Uh, all right then, uh, we've got time for just a few more comments. We're looking at this. Let's have a little look at the pads while you ever think about anything else you wanna know. I wanna talk you through the good and the bad of the pads on the unit. So it's got eight pads, which is good, however, they are only configured for four of them to work how you might think they would work on the software that comes with it. And that's a Serato DJ Lite limitation. So for instance, if I want to put some cues down, Q, 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 I've now got four cue points. I can jump between them and over in the software, you can see that. Again, the software is a bit glitchy, it's just because we're live streaming it. It's smooth in real life. So you see that? I'm jumping around, but I can't use any of these for cues because they're not cues five, six, seven, and eight. They are reverse, forward, back to the beginning of the track, and stutter, which goes to the beginning and uh, goes to the temporary cue point and plays. Pretty pointless controls, frankly. I'd much rather see five, six, seven, and eight cues. Obviously, these are pointless because you can move around the track with a jog wheel, that's what it's there for. And to go to the beginning of the track, press Shift and Q. A little tip there if you didn't know that. But uh, yeah, they're pretty pointless. And the reason they've had to put them there is basically that Serato DJ Lite won't support more than four cue points. If you were to put Serato DJ Pro on your computer, these would suddenly start working as normal cues. And these functions that they're using now would quietly disappear. And why shouldn't they? They're just not very useful. So that's the reason for that. That said, uh, they are fine to feel. They, they, they're nice and rubberized. They're, they're not too small. Obviously, they're only lit in one color. They're not full color. Uh, the sample slots work fine. So on the screen, you can see my sample slots. If I click sampler at the top, I've now got sampler open right in the middle of the screen. I can trigger the samples. You can see that sample that's filling up in green there. That's the laser. Uh, and then I've got other samples on here. And you can put what you want in there. It does come with a few samples. So that works fine. It's good for your eye dents and so on. But there's no other controls other than volume and mute for the samples. I mean, that really is very simple. I'm showing you fader cuts. I guess one more thing I'd like to show you is that they've put real loop controls here. And these are completely mapped to the auto loop controls here. So if I start a loop, you'll see the auto loop comes on. I turn that on and off. The auto loop lights comes on as well. And if I halve and double the loop length, the auto loop light moves as well because this is doing the same thing with your loops as this is. But they have put hardware controls on as well. And I think it's really good that they've done that because it was missing off the other mix track platinum beforehand. And so that's a nice addition to the controller as well. Right, final couple of minutes. Any final questions you have, uh, ask them now or forever hold your peace. Um, over on um, Mixcloud, uh, I'm just checking because we have to keep clicking refresh on Mixcloud. No, Mixcloud's good. So um, uh, always great material, says uh, Earl. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, it's always good to help you with this stuff. Is it USB powered? Yes, it is. It doesn't have its own power unit, Kelvin. Uh, does it have 16 beat pads for loop mode? I've just answered that one, Abby or AB. Uh, do you think Newmark is becoming a greater competitor to Pioneer? Realistically, always has been. Newmark's always shifted pure numbers of its stuff. Uh, the party mix sells loads and these little things sell loads as well. You know, Newmark's always been there with this kind of budget stuff. It's what it does best. So, so yeah, definitely. Um, so Chris says in uh, with Serato DJ Pro, you get eight fader cuts and samples. So yeah, as I was saying, the eight pads will kick in for everything else. Um, it's just that with Serato DJ Lite, you only get those four top ones. So thanks for that, Chris. And I hope you're well, Chris. Good to hear from you. Um, that paddle effect is a cool throwback and nice to see pitch bends, but a controller in 2020 that is above $99 should have access to eight cue points. It does, it's the software that's stopping you having access to them. If you upgraded to Serato DJ Pro, you would immediately get those eight cue points back. Um, all right then, um, so 
um, in Twitch, on Twitch, if Twitch is buffering, here's a Twitch tip for you all, uh, go to settings advance and click un uncheck low latency. Thank you for that. If you are watching on Twitch and having a buffer problem. Um, so you don't need to do a MIDI, MIDI remap in Serato DJ Pro. They will start working automatically, Leo. Um, all right then. Um, so apparently the SB3 does have four decks. Thanks for the correction on that one. Uh, my first equipment was a Newmark IDJ2. That was the one where you slotted the iPad into it, wasn't it? What a raid from the grave that is, says St. Clair. I loved it, uh, but uh, after a long session, it started overheating when I pushed it too hard. Uh, so there you go, pushing it too hard. It's worldwide now, or certainly in most territories now, for those of you that asking, are asking. Uh, all right then, how much does it cost? Again, 200 and 250, whether you go for the Pro or the Platinum. Um, and can you show the difference between the old Platinum and the new one? Yeah, let's end off by doing that one more time. We did do it before, but let's do it again. So this is the new Platinum and the old Platinum is here. So you can see that the new Platinum has got much bigger, whoops, much bigger jog wheels. It's also got, some, uh, got decks laid out identically. Whoa! Lucky that one's a, a durable device because I just dropped it. I can guarantee it will still work because that's not the first time. Right, let's look at the uh, old one then. So the old one, the decks are laid out mirror image of each other and the jog wheels are much smaller. And another thing I want to point out actually is look, you're now getting the buttons over the top of the eight pads here on the new one, which you didn't have on the old one. You had to like hold down shift and press buttons and stuff and it was all a bit weird. So there's a comparison between the two. Size wise, they are the same size, apart from the new one is slightly deeper. So if I put them side by side like that, you'll see that there's just a little bit more depth on the new one but they are exactly the same width and within a few millimeters in height as well. So there you go. That is our comparison of the size of the old and the new. Uh, do you like the info inside the wheels, says the upbeat guy. Yeah, I did. I thought that was really cool. Um, how loud is the headphone volume? It was perfectly loud enough for me in testing. Um, any videos on Virtual DJ? Yeah, we've got loads. Just go and search our, uh, our website, top corner of the website, digitaldjtips.com. Click uh, the search bar and type in Virtual DJ. Um, so, Butterfingers says stealth. Yeah, I know. I'm clumsy. You should see me cooking. She's in the state of the kitchen after I've cooked a meal for everyone. Uh, my first controller was the Newmark Party Mix. Now I use the Pioneer DDJ SX2, says Anjad. Thank you very much for that. Uh, send it to me. Don't worry if you broke it. I'll take it off your hands, says DJ LS. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's not the kind of drop that DJs are meant to do. I told you it's best to tune in live, people, you see. You won't, well, you can watch me drop things on a recording, but it's not so much fun, is it? Um, all right then. Uh, so I think we're done now. Charles just says sweet. Thank you very, very much to everyone for tuning in today. Uh, we've been looking at the new Mixtrack. Let's just unplug it and hold it up one more time. We've been looking at the new Mixtrack controllers. This is the Mixtrack Platinum uh, FX, called FX because it's got these new paddle effects in the middle, which are really useful and people seem to be liking them, not, not worrying too much that the paddle controllers only control one effect at a time. And we've also been looking at the new Numark Pro FX, which is the cheaper version, $50 cheaper. That one's 200, the other one's 250. Uh, and you lose the internal displays and it's only two deck control, but that's all uh, that's different about it. Um, very happy to keep the same road case. It's an important factor when changing gear, says Charles. Well, yeah, as long as you haven't got, you know, that as long as you've got a bit of give in the, in the, uh, in the depth, then yeah, you're going to be fine there. Right. Thank you very much, everyone. One more time. Uh, if you'd like to uh, go and watch our video review of the, the bigger of the two, it's here. Uh, there's also a link there to the other video review, the smaller one. They're both half an hour long, so I go into a lot of depth. And there are also links over on YouTube there to the full reviews over on the website. Uh, and I'm about to go and add the availability onto the news piece on the website straight after this. Uh, so thank you very much, everyone, for joining me today. As always, get good. Uh, get out there as soon as your lockdowns lift. Make the moments, stay safe, and I will see you again uh, very soon for another one of these. And please do hit that share button if you've enjoyed this. It really does help us to keep doing these. Uh, until Friday at the same time when we've got our Friday Q&A, and until Sunday at uh, an hour later than the time that we started doing this, uh, when I'm going to be doing the live stream, the Balcony Beats live stream from my home. No doubt the kids will be jumping around making pests of themselves in the background as usual. Uh, until then, uh, see you again very soon. Uh, take care, people. Bye-bye.